Last month, President Biden addressed the housing crisis in his State of the Union speech. And for those who missed it, and I can't imagine why, that guy is a fireball. Percentage of the men who do so, end of quote. Repeat the line. Women are not without electoral and or political, or, or maybe precise, not and or, or political power. The main subject focused at the housing market was the $10,000 tax credit being offered to offset some of the sting felt in the housing market these days. Now, I have a bone to pick with you, Biden, or whoever is holding this guy up and making his decisions these days. I swear, I, I've seen better puppet work on Sesame Street. <laughs> A $10,000 tax credit is great and all, but at this point, isn't that sort of like seeing a drowning man in the ocean and throwing him a Cheerio two years too late? I mean, what are we supposed to do with this? Now, I didn't watch the speech because I was busy watching pickles slide down a window. So I had to research this game-changing plan on my own. And if you can't tell by my tone, I am not crazy about the idea to begin with. This credit is geared toward two demographics, first-time home buyers and those wishing to sell starter homes. David Dworkin, CEO of the National Housing Council, called it the most consequential State of the Union address on housing in more than 50 years, which is kind of sad to me that this is the best thing anyone could come up with in 50 years. But there's a reason for that, which I'll explain in a minute. Believe that. Now, as noted in my last video, the housing market has become a major influencer of how some people could choose to vote this year. So politicians on both sides would be well advised to come up with something as close to a solution as possible. According to a recent study by Zillow, Americans must earn a six-figure income salary to comfortably buy a typical home compared with $59,000 just four years ago. Home prices have surged about 27% since 2020, while mortgage rates have spiked, making it feel impossible to purchase. The first thing to know about this proposal is that it wouldn't be permanent. A senior Biden administration official stated that this would be for first-time home buyers wanting to purchase in 2024 and 2025. Now hold on, aren't these just proposals at this point? There's nothing set in stone yet, and if I know anything at all about politics, it's that nothing happens overnight. Are you telling me that this is actually going to happen this year? Doesn't Congress have to enact it first? This isn't something we can just flip the switch on, so I think it's very optimistic to have this in place even by the end of 2025 if it happens at all. So first-time home buyers would be privy to a $5,000 tax credit a year for two years, and this would be targeted at middle-class families earning less than $200,000 per household annually. Now, does anyone else think the amount of required income is high? If I'm earning close to $200,000 a year, do I really need a tax credit that's only equivalent to a 1.5 percentage point reduction over two years for a medium-priced home? Especially when you consider there are new construction builders offering rate buy-downs that are easily double, if not triple that. The White House claims that this tax credit would also help over 3 million Americans buy bigger homes. How exactly does that compute? You would actually end up paying a real estate agent more than this tax credit is worth. Biden also wants to provide up to 25,000 in down payment assistance for first generation home buyers whose families haven't benefited from cross generation wealth building associated with home ownership. This proposal is estimated to help 400,000 families in their first home purchase. This actually sounds like it could help, but where exactly are we going to get that $10 million from? Okay, okay. Well, what about the tax credit as it applies to home sellers? Well, the one-year tax credit for current homeowners would be available to people who own starter homes, defined as homes below the median home price in their area. The owners would have to sell to another owner-occupant rather than an investor, according to the White House. First, when they say one-year tax credit, I'm not sure if they mean the seller gets the combined two-year benefit since you can only sell the house once, or if the seller only gets the 5000 quoted for the year. Don't know. Also, how can they tell if someone is an investor or not? I mean, aren't we all investors once we buy a house? How the hell can you enforce something like this? What defines an investor? Would it be reasonable to assume that any large investor trying to take advantage of a program like this is making more than $200,000 a year and wouldn't qualify anyway? Don't know. Also, how does this in any way address the lock-in effect? 
thanks to the decisions made by the Fed in 2021 to lower interest rates to the lowest they've ever been, we're bearing witness to a housing bubble that's made out of pure concrete. It's that ridiculous decision that's driven housing costs up in the first place. And does the White House really think people with homes priced below the median price in their area are the same ones sitting on this ever beneficial lock in effect? Not to mention, does the White House really think that first time home buyers are even willing to consider the quality of a home that would fall below the median local price when they can sit in a rental and save up for something that they really want? There is nothing sexy about the type of home that falls below medium expectations, and there's also certainly the long term value or lack thereof that's worth considering. This tax credit for sellers has a countywide jurisdiction, so it would have a bigger dent in some markets than others. In my market, for example, the median sales price is currently 846000 and quite honestly, you're not finding a single family home worth a damn below 500000 so a less than 1% tax credit seems insulting to a certain point. Give a penny, take a penny? Anyone remember that? Is that even still a thing? I haven't seen change in a while. I, I see what you did there. Okay, so what about just building some new homes? Good news, Biden also proposed several new efforts to fund the construction of additional affordable homes and rental units. So we have rental units coming. Why the hell am I gonna buy someone's crappy below market home when I can get my hands on a new rental with no down payment needed? I mean, which way are we trying to go here? And while formulating this idea, did no one research that multifamily units all across the country are not filling up as fast as predetermined and are offering insane concessions of up to $10,000 to tenants just to get them to walk through the door? I am not kidding. I'm seeing this everywhere in metro areas. This is paired with the neighborhood homes tax credit, which would provide an incentive to build or renovate so-called starter homes or properties geared for the first time home buyer, which could lead to the construction of 2 million homes. This is quite optimistic. And while new construction has seen an uptick in the market, most builders are still obviously gun shy from the great recession in 2008 and their numbers are proof positive. What also hasn't been considered is the availability of raw material, the necessary employment of skilled workers and permit allocation. And who are the lucky contractors that'll be put to this task? And again, I'll ask, who is footing the bill for 2 million new homes? So when could we even expect to see all of this happen? Remember when I said it made me sad that this State of the Union was quoted as being the most consequential State of the Union address on the housing market in more than 50 years? That's because nothing moves slower than politics. Think about what's happened in the housing market in the last five years, let alone 50. Congress would need to pass legislation to change the tax code, and you really think that's going to happen anytime soon, especially in an election year. Look, I appreciate that this administration is at least considering some solutions, but at this point it really comes off as last minute pandering to help puff up an election topic that will appeal to the typical soft brained moderate who isn't planning on making a move in the housing market at all, but still feels like they're being heard. As divisive as politics have become, it's sort of hard to imagine that someone out there is really sitting back in their chair and thinking, Biden or Trump, Biden or Trump. Biden or Trump. This kind of declaration is only paying lip service to people who marginally pay attention to the housing market and other finances to make them feel like the big guy is on their side. Maybe I'm just getting older and more cynical, but the government will never have the resources or the motivation to try and fix something like the housing market. And even if they did, would we really want them to?